So continuing where we left off, so now we have the crankshaft. Um, we have the bearings removed, we have the rod removed. So now you, we can remove the crankshaft. Right. So the good news is, unless you have a spun bearing, you really don't have to worry that much about the crankshaft. Now, the whole process, remember, um, I keep repeating over and over, you gotta have a good relationship with the machine shop. You, they gotta be nice about it and you gotta be able to trust them that they know what they're doing and that they will do what they say they're doing. And so, for the most part, the crankshaft, um, unless you have a spun bearing, they're basically, the m most of the time, what they're gonna do. I'm so sorry if you throw up. Uh, are you sleeping right now? A little. A little? What is this? Yes, I'm so sorry. It's just that I'm my dad has to go back shop. I don't know if, if he's still out. Actually, actually, the owner left and he should be back. He should be back? Yeah. Oh, okay, okay. No, that's fine. Then I'll just pass by you know I can. I'm so sorry if you throw up. Yeah, no problem. Yeah, no problem. Alright. Um. Sorry about that. So, yeah, so for the most part, the crankshaft, um, if all goes well and the engine wasn't too terribly, all they're gonna do is just polish the journals for the most part. That's what they should be doing. Otherwise, the crankshaft will be replaced. But nine times out of 10, the crankshaft is good, unless you have a spun bearing. So that's the good news in terms of the crankshaft. Now, they will be taking it and they will be balancing it if need be. But again, if, if there's no spun bearing, in reality, that's not, normally need it but they're the ones that will confirm it or deny it so that takes care of the crankshaft so let's make sure to get it out of the way because this guy can fall and cause issues okay. Okay. so now the heads Um, I'm gonna pause it a little because I gotta go to Russian real quick, but I'll be back. Okay, so these are the heads. Like I mentioned before, um, the heads is another thing that for the most part you don't have to worry about. You just take it to the machine shop and they'll, for the most part, they'll rebuild it. You could do it yourself, but you need specialized tools, which mo most people don't have. And those specialized tools cost a lot of money. So if you end up buying the tools, your overhaul is going to cost more than if you just let the machine shop do it themselves. So, might as well let them do it themselves. So, what is it that they're going to do? At the bare minimum, if the heads are good, uh, obviously they're going to clean it. You know, so that's the first thing. Because right now you see the heads, it's kind of clean. It's thermal clean. So, they remove all the oil. They put it in an oven. They heat it so much that basically the oil bakes off. So, at the very least, they're going to bring you um, heads, clean heads. So, but that's not what you're after, right? You don't care that the engine is clean. So the heads are clean which cares that the engine runs and so first first and foremost they will um clean the, the the heads and afterwards they're going to do what's called magna flux magna flux basically means that they're going to put some powder in it and then they're going to put like a magnet on it and they're going to determine if there's any cracks on it because sometimes it's hard for you to see in terms of the head with the naked eye if, there, if there's any cracks you can, as hard as you can try, it's going to be very difficult, but they have the actual tool set, the uh, uh, instrument to actually use it, and that procedure is called manual flux. So that's the next thing that they'll do in terms of the heads. Got it. Got it? Okay. So, or what? Okay. Okay. So, where was I? Oh. So after the magna flux and if they determine, hey, the heads are good, um, the next thing they're gonna do, it's, well, it's what's called decking. Uh, uh. Okay, so I have a bad bag, so please be patient with me. So what is decking? So I left, I left the bolts here, I'm gonna remove them. So. Oh. Decking basically means they're gonna make this part smooth. Smooth, straight. So, 
whenever they do the decking on the heads, they also do the decking on the block. Hold on, let me see. Yay! Bring this around. I don't want to show it necessarily because I don't want to drop the, the bearings, but they're also going to be doing decking on the block as well. Why is it that you have to do decking on both the block and the heads? The reason being is because there's a gasket that goes in between it. So this has to be So this gasket right here, that's what the decking procedure is for. So that this fact, this gasket, you can make sure that there's absolutely no leakage in terms of water into the oil or oil into the water. If you do not deck your heads slash block because you have to deck both of them, then even though you put on the gasket, there might be leakage, um, contaminant, cross contamination, including the, the pistons, the exhaust from the piston, the compression, it might escape. So at the bare minimum, again, the machine, the machine shop, well, do the, it's called the deck thing. Um, afterwards, ah, what happened here? Um, another thing that they're most like, well, yeah, so this is, this is like the least thing. So this is assuming that the, that the heads are good, but other thing that it kind of makes sense in my opinion for them to do is since you're at it, might as well do, um, put in like a, New, what is it called? Wait one second. New valve stem seal. What's it called? Yeah, it's a valve stem seal. So right here in the intake and exhaust, there's a valve stem. So they're gonna remove the valve. So again, this is one of the tools that we don't have. So the decking we don't have, and the tool to remove the valves. It's like a little compression thing, and they remove these two tabs. You'll find a lot of YouTube videos that they do it. Um, but it costs money and you're only gonna do it once so why even bother so anyways they're gonna remove the spring the valves gonna come down but there's right here what's called a valve stem seal each one of the valves has it so this is a eight, uh, four cylinder so each cylinder has four cylinder engine so each cylinder has two valves one intake one exhaust one intake one exhaust one intake one exhaust one intake one exhaust and so they're gonna remove these and there's a uh, valve stem seal on each one it's recommended to be replaced um, because like I said you're here might as well do it if those break for the most part when you start the car in the morning and the, the engine is cold um, oil starts seeping from the valves into the combustion chamber and that's when you have that big black spoke in the morning when you turn on the, the engine and so th that's the culprit and since you're at this might as well get it replaced that's another thing and then another thing is um you want to recondition the valves um the valve seat again um only because i don't have the tools and my back hurts and either i can't actually show it but if you remove this if you remove a valve hopefully i won't drop anything if you remove this you remove the valve right here is called the valve seat and that's where the valve sits and so you want to make sure that you can recondition the valve the whole procedure and they have the mechanism for doing this and we're talking about making sure that the valves are concentric, making sure that the valve seat is um, inserted. That oh, the valve guide. Before I forget, the valve guide. So at the very least, where the valve goes, there's what's called a valve guide. Make sure to get that replaced because you're in the machine shop, and again, the machine shop has the tools to do that. So the valve guide is, as you can imagine, where the valve actually goes. It's not against the block. There's like a little piece that goes inside of there, and so you got to make sure. Sometimes the machine shop will say that it's still good. My suggestion is always replace it. And it costs nothing more like 25 or 30 bucks. Might as well do it. So make sure you replace the valve guide. You ask them to replace the valve guide. And what else? Let me see. I know I'm missing something. Um, the valve guide. Yeah, basically. Uh, and I know that there's other like there's lapping compound that they use also to make sure that the valve seats properly. So making sure that this sits, because when you have the compression and the piston is going up, you want to make sure that these seat perfectly, these seal perfectly and no compression le leaks 
otherwise the engine's not gonna it's gonna lack horsepower so they also have a mechanism to test this valve this right here to make sure that there's no exhaust leak going into each valve that way you can make sure that your compression is 100 percent again they have the tools it's cheaper for them to do it they have the experience so let them take care of this okay so that takes care of the this takes care of the seven now let's talk about let me see the block okay so just like the cylinder heads minimum they're gonna clean the block so they put it in an oven bake it all the oil bakes out and basically you have a clean block so minimum they're gonna do that another thing that the machine shop is gonna do is what's called magna flux which basically means that they're gonna check for cracks on the block because that also especially like blocks on the cylinders so right here apunta clipa so if there's any crack here in the cylinders, in the cylinder walls, water actually escapes. Either water escapes or oil goes in, and that's when you have a mixture of oil and water. And so how do you make sure that that does not happen? Well, you take it to the machine shop, and they will magnaflux the sky and make sure that the block is good so you have a good foundation. Now, um, assuming that it's magnaflux and it's good, and they're also going to do the decking. So afterwards, the third thing is, so first is cleaning, second is magnaflux, and the third is decking they always deck it so again i don't want to move it too much let me see i'm going to show you on this side there so we're going to do the decking where this is going to be flat so the head gasket could have a perfect mating seal so that's the other thing that the machine shop is going to do now another thing that they're going to do is they're going to hone the cylinders they're going to make them a little like they're going to make them a little bit either bigger or they're going to restore the cross hatching that's yeah, that's the bare minimum, in my opinion. Um, that has to be, because, I mean, the pistons, they wear out. So as the pistons start going in and up and down, up and down, they're wearing out the cylinder walls, and they're wearing out what's called a cross hatching. And so, uh, an engine that has high mileage, but they didn't necessarily had a car catastrophic failure, the only thing you're probably having to have to do is rehome the cylinders, get the cross hatching back, and you're basically good. That's the best case scenario. Um, the worst case scenario would be that and on top of that what's called line home. So again, I'm, I'm not going to show that because I don't have the tools, obviously. The machine shop has a tool. But line honing basically means that they make the, they restore these holes, the size of these holes back to factory specs. And so you'll, you can find videos. It's called line honing. This, where the crankshaft is that. But in my opinion, but again, get this confirmed with the machine shop line honing is not necessary unless you have a spun bearing just like the crankshaft um unless you have a spun bearing where this bearing is going round. so these are bearings right so you can kind of see them so unless the bearings are going round and round and round in which case they're destroying the actual uh baiting bearing block surface um then you really don't need to line hone so um when spun bearing happens when you don't put oil by the way and so, uh, yeah, again, like I said, cut a starker failure. Another thing is the camshaft. The camshaft, yes. It's just easier just to replace it, you know. So, But the machine shop will tell you if you can reuse it. It's my opinion that you should replace it. Just because, might as well, you know. So everything is on the cheapo. You can either do the cheapo or the most expensive where you basically replace everything. But it's not necessary to do everything. So it might not be necessary to line home the bearings so why do it the machine shops the one that can tell you that you should or should not do it um the crack camshaft the machine shop is the one that can tell you whether you can reuse it or not reuse it and that depends on the loads whether they're too um they're too wasted away um boring the cylinders again that for the most part that's standard but um another thing is replace the crankshaft the camshaft bearings and um Again, that's another, just like the cylinder heads, it's another special tool that costs, it's expensive. It's expensive, so um, it's expensive to buy. It's like, I think it's like 200 bucks and you're not gonna use it but once. So again, the machine shop has it. Pay the extra money just to get them installed. So you could tell the crankshaft bearings right here. They're almost like, I'm sorry, the camshaft bearing. The crankshaft bearings are almost like, the, the camshaft bearings are almost like the crankshaft bearings except that these are half moon like they're in two parts like and the camshaft bearings is one single piece so you can see it right here 
So remember, this this video is to overhaul on Mercruiser Cruiser 3.0 liter engine, not another car, not another engine. But the procedure is almost the same. So this is the bearing. So you actually hammer it in and you pop it out. So it has three bearings. This one has one, two, three. So it comes in a kit. And on top of that, they make sure that they line the holes in terms of the bearings. And so they make sure that the orientation is correct. So they have the experience. They have the tools. So pay for that. Don't do it yourself. Don't get the cam the camshaft bearings and you try and install it because you're going to pay for it in the tool and you might not install it correctly you know so they have the experience so that and um yeah but the good news is okay so the good news is that the guys from the machine shop have actually agreed to let us film them while they rebuild this thing not rebuild it but bring it back to specs while they um what is it that they do you know whether they're gonna whether they when they decking when they line hone you know whether they uh, bore the cylinders or whether they just reestablish the cross hatching um when they fix the heads they're actually going to let us videotape so that's pretty freaking awesome um so hopefully this block is still good hopefully everything is good and again have a good relationship okay so this is m my opinion in terms of the machine shops of course they make money so you can uh, do two, one of two things Either you could give the engine to the machine shop and tell the machine shop, you know what, rebuild the engine. That's going to be more expensive, but at the same time, you're guaranteed that it's going to be done right, but it's going to be more expensive and it takes the fun out of it. And But most machine shops, they prefer to do it that way. They prefer to you take the, the, the engine and have them overhaul it because they're going to make money off it. You know, the minimum they're going to charge you, you know, in El Paso, it's going to be $1,000. And I've heard in other places where it's a lot more expensive. And so, um, but there's, uh, but in, but you can also try to tell them, hey, I'm going to do it myself. So, you know what, just bring it back to specs, tell me the, the numbers, and I'll actually rebuild it myself. Um, they tend not to do that, not, not to like that. So, it depends on the machine shop. So, they will try to steer you away from it and try to tell you, you know, they'll be the questions, you know, they're going to answer them with a certain attitude. You know, they're not going to want to answer them. So, stay away from those machine shops. Try to find a good machine shop that that either way, either you rebuild it with them or you build it yourself. They're either way, they're going to help you. Those are the machine shops that are awesome. Those are the ones that I prefer, not the ones that are pushing like, oh, let us do it, let us do it. And sometimes they don't even get it right themselves. And so make sure to get a good machine shop. And the one that I go to, I'm going to show it to you. And I really, really, really like them. And I really, really would like for you guys to... Uh, call them out or you know or you know give them a call because honestly honestly they're it's a very good machine shop they're very patient if you're experienced uh like myself you know they you kind of know what's going on but if you're a novice at the same time um they'll guide you step by step through the process and answer your questions but not answer the questions in a way that's mean rude you know or sarcastic they will actually be patient with it which is what you're looking for in terms of this because many times you have a lot of questions that the videos just can't answer and so I know I'm missing something okay so I covered both machine shop both methods okay so yeah so in the machine shop I mean this is basically how you take it to them you're supposed to remove the bolts so we're gonna remove all the bolts before we take it to them and then um we're gonna let them fix it let's see how it does so afterwards we're gonna get it back and we're gonna put it back together so hopefully everything will be well thank you bye